Welcome to CityWorks, where we engage in conversations with the City of Grand Rapids department heads and staff. They are our neighbors, friends, and fellow community members. This series was developed so constituents can get to know our city's many arms and functions at the local government level. I'm Mayor Tasha Conley, and today I will speak with Park and Rec Director Dale Anderson. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Dale, can you tell us uh, a little bit about how long you've been with the city and um, what <coughs> being a director of park and recs look like? Um, I'm in my 24th year with uh, the city of Grand Rapids. 22 of them as park and rec director. When I was first hired, it was to manage the IRA Civic Center. Okay. And a couple years in, Marilyn Isaac, who was the park and rec director, took over the IT department. And so then at that time, I ended up taking over the whole park and rec department. So that encompasses Yanmar Arena now, yeah. um, formerly IRA Civic Center, and then managing all the city parks. So the neighborhood playgrounds, the outdoor rinks, uh, the sports fields, you know, uh, Streeter Field, Grand Rapids Sports Complex with all the soccer and softball fields and things like that. Just a couple things. <laughs> yeah, just a couple. <laughs> um, so the average home value in the city of Grand Rapids is, is about $260,000. Uh, dollars and so mm -hmm. based on this value constituents pay around 14 cents a day for uh, the services delivered by park and rec okay yep. so and I know you kind of spoke a little bit about this but what other services are provided maybe more um, a deeper dive uh, for that 14 cents a day sure. what what things encompass park and rec fields mm -hmm. courts Right. Can you kind of do a deeper dive into that? A big part of it obviously is Yanmar Arena so not only the hockey figure skating ice events but all the dry floor events that we do you know home shows boat shows weddings concerts with the new meeting space in the upper lobby we've been you know accommodating a lot of meetings trainings things like that so a big part of it is spent with the arena but also managing the parks kind of entails working with the school district the ymca with their programs the youth associations and mm -hmm. scheduling out the baseball, softball, soccer fields. And then I have a couple staff in the in the summertime that groom the fields, you know, paint the lines, do all those things. In the winter, we uh, man the warming shacks. So it's kind of across, you know, Public Works does most of the park maintenance, mm -hmm. but my staff kind of maintains the Streeter Field, the Yanmar Arena, area up mm -hmm. at Legion Park and then we maintain most of the things at the sports complex as well. And how many full-time and part-time <clears throat> staff do you have? So just myself and Chad Moen are the only two full-time employees. In the winter we run usually about seven or eight maintenance staff at the arena and about 10 high school college kids watching the warming shacks and then one to two part-time guys helping maintain the the baseball softball soccer fields how many parks are in the city i believe we have 28 28 it's, parks uh, okay <laughs> it goes between 26 and 28 somehow but and they're not all your traditional parks like steamboat landing on the mississippi river is considered a city park a newton sliding hill in the winter is considered a city park so not all 28 are your traditional playground yep. green space parks but I guess looking at the website and counting them this yeah. morning, it is 28. Yeah. So what does a park designation mean? You were saying they're not all maybe like a traditional like swing set or, you know, like what mm -hmm. we consider playground or park. What? So what would constitute a park? Just open green space yep. that's, you know, for the public to use. So yep. Central School Grounds, for instance, is considered yep. a city park. And like most people wouldn't look at it that way. It does host a lot of events and, yep. and serves a great purpose for things like Tall Timber Days and things like that. So the city recently reconstructed Yanmar Arena, formerly mm -hmm. known as the Civic Center. So can you um, tell the audience why those improvements were necessary and so important to our community? Well, we didn't want to shovel the roof anymore. It was not an ideal situation once, you know, we had a, a, a couple trusses break in areas. So we brought in a, a structural engineer and basically he said anytime there's a foot of snow on the roof we can't occupy so for the last three years you know prior to this past season city staff and then sometimes if it was a bigger snow we'd bring in contractors and shovel the snow off to keep it safe but um but the importance of yanmar arena to the community uh, we did an economic impact study back in 2017 i think it was and at that time the study found that the arena brought in about 3.4 million dollars of economic impact to the city um, 
you know, most of that is hockey tournaments, but also other events. Yep. So, I mean, that that's huge for the community, but also it's a gathering spot for the community. Some years, like this year, we hosted high school graduation. As I mentioned previously, the dry floor events and weddings and things like that. And then the Rife Center has, the last two years, when we were available prior to construction, we're utilizing the pavilion out back for concerts and that was starting to become really popular. Not only the economic impact of the arena, but just the, I don't know, it's, it's kind of a community gathering spot. Yeah, I think people would be surprised to know how many non-ice related events do occur Right. at the arena. Um, I was surprised to learn that too. Um, and also like the economic impact during our shoulder season winter, mm -hmm. you know, when it's, uh, can be harder on our businesses and our local economy right. um, to have that uh, support uh, come in from mm -hmm. out of town, spending money and staying here is, is really critical. Right. And what we've found um, in just working with lodging properties and um, restaurant owners, um, they, they get traffic from other sports, but the overnight stays, really hockey kind of drives mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. um, in our community. So it's something our Youth Hockey Association takes a lot of pride in, hosting good tournaments and bringing teams in from, you know, the Twin Cities, Roseau, Moorhead, yep. everywhere. And a lot of times it's, um, you know, two to three night stays. Yep, yep. And so Civic you know was a civic center but really is still a community gathering place for a whole host of different um, events as you mentioned and right. so can anybody rent the civic center how does that oh well, yeah yeah okay <laughs> yeah we'll excuse me yeah marina excuse me yeah marina yes yeah so like i said weddings they just contact me and we you know look at dates that are available um yeah. same thing with like i said that newly remodeled meeting space yeah. upstairs um, we've had baby showers, wedding showers, um, trainings for, for different companies. PUC has used it to do a couple community meetings, educational meetings about the Legionella yep. and things yep. like that. So yep. it, it's a great space and it's working out really well. 28 parks, um, there may be some major infrastructure needs or maintenance that has to be done from time right. to time. Can you speak a little bit about maybe some of those parks that are needing um, major infrastructure improvements or just things that are in your kind of five-year plan or 10-year plan as far as it, it major infrastructure improvements or things you'd like to see? A couple that come to mind, Blandon Beach. As you know, the beach house, I think we closed it about five or six years ago. Just everything about it uh, had aged and, and was in need of too much maintenance to justify. Um, so we've just been using portable restrooms there. So I, I'd really like to see tearing down that building and replacing it with a mm -hmm. nice restroom facility because as you know it's a popular park yes yes um, it's got good playground features there mm -hmm. i have applied for dnr regional grants there a couple times unsuccessfully and those had us improving the restroom facilities adding a nice big pavilion i think that would be really yeah. popular there mm -hmm. um, so that that's one project i'd like to see hopefully in the next couple of years we need to resurface and redo the tennis courts at Grusendorf Park, which is going to be a pretty pretty big expense. Other than that, there's a, a few small playgrounds throughout the community that need replacement. But really, we did a good job using parkland dedication monies. Can you speak about that a little bit, kind of how things get paid for? I believe it's an ordinance that was created. And most cities have it when a, when a developer comes in and plats a property. Mm -hmm. They either have to develop a park or green space or give money in lieu of that. Yep. And it's, I don't know the calculation, but it's based on the values and things. And so typically most cities take the money in lieu of the parkland, especially yep. when you have 28 of them already. Right, right. Uh, and then we could use that money to improve playgrounds. We've done quite a few since I've been here, Blandon Beach and some of the smaller parks like Willow and McGowan and mm -hmm. some of those just updating equipment. But there are a few more that need improvements like Grusendorf Park, that, mm -hmm. that stuff has been there for a long time, probably needs an update. And then we've also worked with organizations like the the Evening Rotary Club has adopted Crystal Lake Park yep. and helped us build that pavilion and helped with play equipment there. Affinity Plus Credit Union adopted uh, Maplewood Park and they actually paid for the entire structure um, that we built there. Jeez. I want to say a couple of years ago, but it was yeah. probably six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and so working with civic organizations has helped update some parks as well. Yeah. So if anybody listening wants to uh, work with you, you're more than willing and wanting to work with other partners if they're 
have oh. a heart for. Right, absolutely. Park and Rec, okay, perfect. Any civic organization that wants to adopt a park and help yep. us, you know, financially or even just providing volunteer labor. Yeah. Um, like I said, the Rotary Club does a lot of maintenance around there. They're like, we'll come and Public Works will just drop a load of wood chips and they'll go yep. and do all the mulching and stuff. Yeah. So how many miles of trails does the City of Grand Rapids currently have? I believe it's 38. I, okay. had, to, I had to call our engineer on that this morning, yeah. Matt. But, yeah. um, and the trails consist of uh, like cross country, like at Legion Park, we have, yep. you know, they're, they're multi-purpose. They're walking, hiking, biking, cross country ski in the winter. Same behind, uh, or at Sylvan Point behind the hospital. And then some of them are just off street paved you know, walking, biking trails. And so different service groups you mentioned, like also help with sometimes the maintenance, like at Legion, you know, there are groups that also do help groom and, and things like that, correct? Yes, Northern Lights Nordic Ski Club does all the grooming of the cross country ski trails at Legion Park. Yep. So we have a lot of partnerships. Let's talk about Legion. So mm -hmm. um, currently um, city staff are working on and preparing uh, to get ready for a master plan for Legion Park. So can you talk a little bit about uh, why we're looking at a master plan and what, what that plan may entail? Legion Park is it's huge. It's 150 mm -hmm. acres dedicated to recreation and education. So it encompasses Myanmar Arena, Conifer Field, the old football field, the skate park, Streeter baseball field, the entire Noble Hall field, um, and the entire high school Rife Center, mm -hmm. and then all the trails behind the high school. We've met um, only once or twice now with staff from the school district and talked about how that area up there is kind of a regional hub, you know, mainly sports, but also you have, you know, the arts and mm -hmm. you have the band and everybody mm -hmm. else involved in that. But um, what could we do <clears throat> possibly in the future to improve that whole 150 acres that would bring more money to the city? Yeah. Yep. And so, you know, the master plan just getting going, but, you know, I think uh, to your point, having a healthy, vibrant park and recs is an economic, there is economic implications in that. Oh, yeah. um, as you mentioned, like with Yanmar, but you know, people, when they come to town, mm -hmm. they, um, or they bring their dogs to town, right. or you live in town, like there's a dog park. I mean, I think yep. um, many people are surprised and happy to know that we do have a dog park in Veterans Park. Right, when that, yeah. <laughs> when that concept first came up, I was, I was even talking with, with Tom Pagel, our city administrator, and I'm like, why, why do we need a dog park? We have like thousands of acres of yeah. land for these dogs. And but come to find out, once it's built and the and the people helping raise the funds to build it, it's it's really a way for residents or, or visitors to meet other people yep. and yep. interact. So it isn't yep. just about the dogs and stuff. It, it's really kind of a social activity. Yep, yep. So with over 200 acres of parks and 28 parks, do you have some favorites? Favorite uh, park? Well, <laughs> if you can. I mean, American Legion Park is tough to beat. I mean, obviously, you know, you have the arena there, the skate parks there, baseball, you know, all, yep. everything's there. Um, the the mountain bike trails, the mm -hmm. cross country ski trails. So it's, it's, pretty much all encompassing other than we don't have a playground yeah um so i you know that's pretty near and dear to my heart the sports complex i think is a really nice facility yeah. but vets park is a beautiful park i mean all the red and white pines and yeah. you know we have pavilions available there that are rented every weekend all summer oh, for good. you know different family reunions grad parties birthday parties you know that play structure was updated about 10 years ago so it's it's a pretty nice play structure yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, of course, the dog park is in there, and yep. you know you can sit and watch the river, yep. um, walking bridge across. Yeah. So, um, those are some of my favorites, and I I still like Blandon Beach just because every time I drive by and check things, it's it's well hasn't been very warm yet. This, yeah, yeah. This summer, but you know maybe tomorrow when we hit 80. Yeah. Um, you know, you just a lot of activity, kids There's having very fun. Very busy. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And outside enjoying nature. Right. So that's a wonderful thing. Yep. Um, so what's the best part of your job? Um, probably just interacting with all the people, the the residents, the visitors. Um, you know, like I said, whether it's at the arena or I'm just visiting neighborhood parks, just asking people questions or, yeah. um, you know, up at the softball fields when we're hosting regional tournaments for girls fast pitch or whatever. Um, 
I just I like interacting with people and yeah I enjoy that part of it yeah and people um, seem proud of the number of parks we have and the how well maintained they are and with actually not a lot of staff <laughs> um, right. and so I you, you do a really nice job well, so thanks. thank you but I do want to I mean a lot of the maintenance is done yes. by our public works yes. crew so yes. it's not just my one or two college kids and Chad maintaining yes, all the parks thank you. I mean, yep. we, like I said, we take care of kind of the complex and and Yanmar and the you know that block of of Legion Park. But yeah, yeah Public Works does a great job with their yeah. high school and college kids in the summer maintaining all the parks. The other thing, and this is I would say a couple years ago it was probably five or six. You know, something uh, there was a swing installed at Rotary Park. Mm -hmm. uh, can you speak a little bit about that swing and that project um, for people who ask, like what? What is that? <laughs> what is that? Right. So, you know, Myrna was kind of the driving force with that um, mobility mania. And so um, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> You're testing my memory here. It's okay. Um, but I believe all of that money, I think, was pulled out of Parkland dedication. Yeah. Um, and then Public Works installed it. And that was a... a a challenging install yeah. making sure all the grades and everything were right yeah. um so but yeah it's a wheelchair swing um open to the public and you basically wheel up to it and back into it and it locks into place and then you know um a companion can push the person who's in the wheelchair and yeah um i wish i saw it in action a little bit more than i yeah. do yeah. Um, but it is really satisfying when you drive by and, and you see someone in there. Yeah. yeah, or I've never had the sensation of swinging or, you right. know, um, that inclusivity. So um, I just wanted to bring that to people's attention that that what that function of that swing is right. and kind of where uh, that those resources came from to support that project. Right. So thank you. Yeah. All right, well, um, thanks for joining us for this episode of CityWorks. It's in our nature to be informed, and I hope you learned something new today about your hometown and community. Stay kind, Grand Rapids.